Uh, today we'll be covering IP network and storage for security surveillance design and practices made simple. Wow, that was a mouthful. Okay, uh, during this uh, webinar it should take between 25 and 35 minutes, uh, including questions. Uh, we'll cover uh, calculating camera bandwidth, uh, camera storage requirements, uh, sizing uh, NVRs, um, <clears throat> or video recording servers, um, calculating IPC and bandwidth requirements, and correctly distributing camera video. Now, I realize for a lot of our audience, uh, this will be uh, some of it will be review, uh, some of it will be new, and we're taking a little different approach here. We're just going to break down uh, a soup to nuts from beginning to end uh, with uh, ten simple rules uh, that you should uh, follow in every uh, configuration or proposal that comes your way. Okay, first, uh, what is camera bandwidth? Uh, uh, bandwidth is strictly defined as a as a quantity of data or a certain amount of video that can be transmitted, meaning it's a, a, a specification, or is actually transmitted in a specific amount of time. For instance, uh, if we're talking about how how much uh, or what is the capability of a pipe or a camera. Uh, then we, we would rate that as uh, 1 GBE, 1 gigabit uh, per second, or 56 megabits per second. That would be the maximum capability. If your camera is actually running, it would be putting out data at a certain rate, uh, 22 megabits per second, 7 megabits per second. Uh, the general measurement for bandwidth on the LAN and camera side is in bits per second or kilobits per second. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of things that actually affect a uh, camera network. Most specifically are the cameras themselves. Uh, your camera resolution. Uh, the higher the resolution, the more data is uh, being collected and uh, sent down the uh, IP network uh, to be recorded. So very simply, a 640 by 480 VGA image uh, does not send as much data as a 5 megapixel camera uh, does. Okay. The type of compression method, uh, is, there, there are basically three different uh, standards that are used today. Uh, the first is no compression at all, just a raw streaming data. Obviously the largest amount of data that has to be transmitted. The more data, the more time. Uh, you can reduce your time by having higher speed pipes, but the reality is cameras are connecting to 100 megabit networks. Uh, MJPEG uh, is the earliest and it's the simplest compression algorithm. Uh, it is not, it is the least effective of all of the compression meth methods. Middle of the road, oh my gosh, I have a typo, is MPEG, not MJPEG again. And it offers better compression than MJPEG. And at the top of today's standards list is H.264. Along with the compression method is the quality of compression. The more you compress the data, the, more, the, the less space you're using, obviously. But you also lose quality as you compress more. Uh, so uh, high quality. Uh, settings for compression uses more space and a lower quality setting on your compression settings uh, will use less space but you'll also have a lossy picture. Image complexity. Who drew these pictures? They're wonderful. Uh, obviously the amount of data that a camera is capturing combined with the compression algorithms uh, greatly affects how much data you have. If you're uh, compressing just purely black and white data, uh, you don't have as much information to move as you do uh, moving color. And the more objects, the more colors, the more things that you have uh, within the field of view of the camera, also it makes it more complex and consequently there's more data transferred. Percent of motion. Now with MJPEG compression, uh, this is not a, a factor because it's essentially taking 
a, a picture. It's a static image uh, per field and compressing it. But with MPEG and H.264, both of which are motion based in a video sense, not a picture sense, uh, the higher the uh, amount of motion that's within the field of view, the more data is translated. And this is an example of very simple motion back and forth, less data, more complex, more motion within field of vision, much more data is being transmitted out. Okay. Frames per second. Uh, how fast, how many frames are you transmitting in a particular, uh, in a second? How, the more frames you tell you, the more information you're obviously transmitting. Okay. Now, all of the above, resolution, compression method, quality of compression, complexity, motion, and frames per second, that determines a camera's bit rate. And in a lot of camera calculators, that's strictly the field that's used. Uh, you could mathematically take the bit rate and come up with how much space uh, is required or how much capacity or how much data you're going to move to the NVR and then subsequently the storage. Dick, I and got a question. Bit, yes. I'm sorry. I got a question just came up. Uh, going back yeah. to your fabulous drawings, uh, some of the rate calculators don't account for image complexity or percent of motion. How do you account for that when you're trying to calculate? 